Hi there, I'm First Alert meteorologist Cruz Medina. This is First Alert Weather Plus. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon. I've got an important update to pass along to you. So this is for NOAA. They do their seasonal outlook as far as what to expect for hurricane season before the season even starts. That usually comes out sometime in May or early June. Keep in mind the season goes from June 1st through November 30th. So we're barely approaching the climatological peak of hurricane season. Now, with that said, this mid-season mid update doesn't have any major changes to it. Still, I wanted to pass along these updates. I know many folks here in the mid-state probably planning a fall break trip to, you know, somewhere along the Gulf or maybe an East Coast beach. And because of that, there, it's good to stay up to date with the tropics. There's also many folks here in Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky that own property uh, down in some of those tropical areas, so right on uh, the coastline of the United States. So we're going to get into the details here. Here's the major thing. So the confidence that the season is going to be above normal, so more active than usual, that has actually increased. So I want you to take a look at your screen here. You can see this pie chart. So there's only a 10% chance of this season being near normal. Look at that. That sticks out like a sore thumb. That's a 90% chance of seeing above normal conditions. So this isn't necessarily rare per se, but it does show that we're probably going to see this season overachieve just a little bit. Now here's another update. The original forecast outlook for this season had 17 to 25 named storms. The only change there on the right side of your screen is going to be 17 to 24 named storms. So they brought the amount of named storms down one and the confidence that we we're going to stay above normal, you know, that's pretty much stayed the same. So you'll see that there's not any major updates here. What is pressing, though, is that we've had lots of uh, tropical activity already. So we don't always see a bunch happen early in the season. I'd say uh, months like June and July are fairly quiet, at least typically speaking. But this year has been a little more active than normal. So we're already seeing uh, you know, the possibility of tropical development, which I'll talk about in just a second. But even if we don't get that E name this week, which is a big possibility, we've already had four named storms. So the most recent was Debbie. Uh, that wreaked havoc on much of the East Coast and even parts of Florida. So it landfalled in Florida and then moved into the Southeast, made a second landfall in South Carolina, and we saw. It was the biggest, one of the biggest national news stories last week. You know, all the flooding that that storm did and even tornadoes. I know my hometown had a tornado last week. That's in Wilson County in North Carolina. So uh, with that said, you know, that's just kind of a, an appetizer, if you will, of what the rest of the season could look like. Now, I will say, even if we see this whole list filled up, how many of these are going to actually be major hurricanes? So I think we could have several more hurricanes. How many of those reach land and how many of them are major hurricanes? So if you're not familiar with that term, that's a category three hurricane or higher. And keep in mind, the category just tells you about the wind speed. Uh, the pressure is also factored into that, but this does not tell you anything about the flooding potential, tornado potential, and those are huge things. So we just saw that with Debbie. That storm landfalled as a category one with 80 mile per hour winds. And even as it moved inland and made a second landfall over South Carolina, it just sat and spun at the coast, off of the southeast coast and inundated many areas. Uh, Charleston, Savannah, these were some cities that saw flooding, Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, lots of eastern North Carolina as well. Those tornadoes that moved through um, in the Charleston area, in parts of eastern North Carolina, you know, those are effects that the category does not account for. So don't ever let your guard down or be distracted by, oh, it's only a category one. Category ones can do a lot of damage and it typically does come in the form of flooding, especially with slow moving storms like Debbie. Now, speaking of those names, I told you, I think we get the E name this week. So the National Hurricane Center, this is their tropical outlook for the next two days, showing an 80% chance of a disturbance developing. Now this disturbance is right where that red polygon starts. Uh, so that's gonna be on the east side of your screen, if you will. So if you take a look at that, 80%, that's significant. And this is the area, this red shaded area, that's the area where this storm could form. So if it ends up farther south, it is going to impact the Leeward Islands and possibly even Puerto Rico. 
So the Leeward Islands have tropical storm warnings in effect already, and Puerto Rico has a tropical storm watch in effect, in, anticip in anticipation, I should say, of potential impacts from this storm. So the, what the National Hurricane Center is calling it is potential tropical cy cyclone five, that's PTC. I just abbreviated it to keep it short. So potential tropical cyclone five, if this were to strengthen into a tropical storm, would get the name Ernesto. And like I said, this thing is kind of disorganized right now. The wind speeds, the last time I checked, we're at 35 miles per hour. So it's possible it's about to be upgraded to a tropical depression. But still, this storm, whether it develops into a tropical storm or not, which it likely will, is going to bring very heavy rains to islands like Puerto Rico and the Leeward Islands. I mean, these areas, this time of the year, they just get inundated so much with any tropical activity that's nearby. So as of right now, while I'm speaking to you, this storm still at 35 miles per hour max sustained winds, and it still has not been uh, deemed a tropical depression. So it's something that we'll watch in the coming days. This does not look like it's going to impact the US mainland, which is a really good thing. I can actually show you uh, what the National Hurricane Center is thinking as far as this track. So I'm gonna throw this up full screen here for you. That way you can take a look at what we call uh, the cone of uncertainty. So take a look at your screen. You can see that the National Hurricane Center's official track does curve it away from the United States. That said, you'll see that blue shading down near the island, so Puerto Rico included. I guess Puerto Rico was now upgraded to a tropical storm warning. So this is something that we'll be watching. Once again, not going to impact the U.S. mainland, but Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. So if you have uh, friends or family there, just make sure that you give them a call and let them know that lots of rain is headed in their direction. So that's an update on the tropics, and that's going to do it for this edition of First Alert Weather Plus. As always, if you have any topics that you're curious to hear more about that are weather, environmental, or science related, feel free to send them in my direction. I'd be happy to get them on the show and talk about them. Uh, you can find all of the weather extras, if you will, or beyond what you can get in a normal forecast, beyond what you can see on TV. Uh, we have a web, or in our website, we have an area called First Alert Weather Plus. That's what this segment's all about, and plenty of other weather, environmental, and science-related stories that you can catch there. So have a great day, and I'll see you on the next edition of First Alert Weather Plus.